Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today we have a first impressions video looking at this uh, fairly new, it's only recently come out, um, 1 to 700 scale um, SMS Durflinger in its 1916 configuration from TACOM. So I just wanted to offer a little update since um, I recorded this first impressions video of TACOM's new Durflinger kit. Um, since I did the recording, I've been doing a little bit of digging about. Um, there was something that felt a little bit odd about the kit. Uh, and with it being a new kit, somehow it wasn't quite hitting the mark. Anyway, um, it appears that the kit is um, the plastic part of the kit at least is um, the old 2015 Flyhawk release of the Durflinger um, which means that you're actually buying an eight-year-old kit um, and it's not a new kit by Tacom at all which at the time of recording uh, I didn't know. Now throughout this video you're going to see me reference uh, Tacom as um, the main leading competitor of 1700 scale uh, model kits and compare how I think this levels up to it. And in my mind, I'm using the Flyhawk Prince of Wales, which is uh, one of the Flyhawk kits that I have in my stash, which for me is perhaps the ultimate 1700 scale kit at this time of recording. Um, and this kit falls way short of that. Um, but Flyhawk have upped their game over the years. So when I'm referring to Flyhawk, I'm talking about a modern Flyhawk. This is being toted as a new release from TACOM, uh, and therefore um, I'm comparing it to other new releases. Uh, what I will say is the price of this kit um, is around about the same as getting a second-hand um, Flyhawk kit and the Flyhawk kit comes with some of the things that in this video I will say are missing. Now this is the second Tacon kit that um, I've reviewed. Um, they're new to the market when it comes to ships uh, and the last one that we reviewed was a 1350 scale uh, modern German ship and actually other than the lack of um, some photo etch railings, it, it wasn't a bad model at all. Um, so let's see how they get on at 1700 scale. Now I have to say I wouldn't have bought this. Um, the, the website that I bought it from, the company I bought it from, um, inadvertently advertised this as 1350 scale um, and a bit of a surprise actually when it turned up and it was only 1700 scale. Um, uh, but yeah, um, probably one of the largest distributors in the UK. Everyone will know them and uh, they, they messed up. Um, so this isn't a kit that I'm likely to build, I wouldn't have thought. So um, at some point we will have to deal with moving this on. So um, let's have a look at what we get. I've got to say, um, First thing that to know is that Snowman model is involved again. They were involved in the uh, 1350 scale ship. So this is clearly a collaboration that Tacom are using for um, all of their um, ships going forward. Um, I really do like the box. It's lovely glossy box. You've got, um, uh, well, a, a picture um, a computer, not a dead sophisticated computer image either, computer image of the ship um, in front of a technical drawing of the ship. Um, it tells us that it's full hull, um, which means we won't have a, a waterline option, and it tells us that it's a detailed static display model 
with only one type of markings and that there is some photo etch included. Um, if we look at this side, we've got um, a little bit of information telling it's recommended for over 14s because it has etching. Um, the, the, the product may be slightly different to what's illustrated um, and contains small parts. And then we've got um, some more drawings of the ship. The side, both sides are pretty much the same um, and takes you through what's already on the top. Uh, and then on this side, we've got uh, some more drawings and a bit more information, contact information and so on. So the box looks lovely. It's not very well made. Um, my box has come apart and if I show you, um, the glue has just separated from this glossy card and so it's just come undone. It's not, uh, it's just not held. Uh, not the right type of glue for the surface, so um, yeah, so it's it's come apart, but it's not damaged. And then inside we have uh, a bag full of plastic parts, another bag, a zip bag with plastic parts, photo etch decals, and instruction book in a bag. And then more bags with typically two sprues per bag and the zip locks have just one in. So not a huge amount of parts. Let's have a look at the instructions. So the instructions are uh, a landscape um, semi-gloss. Um, booklet I guess stapled um, on the back we've got what I think is possibly a computer yeah a computer generated image rather than an actual photo of the model um, and we've got the build key right here on the front cover um, and then some uh, tips the read carefully tips before we start um, and it's telling us it's the Durflinger and we've got our coat of arms there and you can see the basic shape um, it's a, a classic shape for this time uh, in the uh, German fleet uh, with a torpedo tube at the front um, and um, twin funnels it's all very reminiscent of sidelets and, and other ships at that time what is interesting is it says full hull series, so that suggests that they are planning some others as well. Um, what we'll have to see. The part number of this kit is SP7034. As we turn over, we've got um, our parts listed. Gives you the sprue uh, letters, but there's no numbers, so it's not really a map. It's of no use other than to just quickly check that you've got all the sprues that you're supposed to have. Um, and then we have a very clearly marked step one, which is showing the build up of, well, that looks like that's waterline to me. Uh, we've got a single deck and two hull sides. Um, then we're making up 12 uh, secondary battery guns, which are going into this part of superstructure here which is separate and then we are putting on the deck onto there there's a little bit of superstructure going on there at the back which has got vents and bits and pieces on um, so yeah that's had 12 guns being referenced in there and we can see our part numbers there is no reference to color or paint at all as we turn over, step two, that's a nice addition. So we've got all of the support booms for the anti-torpedo netting there. Um, so they're being in the, in the stowed position, but it wouldn't be difficult to fix them out and then put some netting up, which would look really nice. So the netting would be... Um, just slightly deeper than the bottom of the keel of the ship so that you ha it had full protection. 
you can see when it's up it, it's sort of does the main body of the ship but doesn't protect the absolute stern and, and, and bow. Uh, we've got uh, another deck going on which has some forward superstructure um, and we've got a step there with all those little parts being built up so we've got what look like some form of crane or davit, um, some form of boxes of some type, possibly life rafts or something. A bit difficult to see with just my reading glasses on. Um, and some um, some more little minor guns. So probably smaller than the secondary ones again. Okay. Just uh, going to check the key and understand what that means. All right, repeat on opposite side. Okay. Then we're on step three, and that's a really busy single step, isn't it? Um, we've got funnels going onto their platforms mounted onto superstructure. Uh, we've got additional superstructure going on. Uh, we've got range finders, funnel caps, spot lamps, um, all sorts of bits of supports, photo X ladders, um, bridge, um, and more range finding. I mean, there's tons and tons of stuff going on there. Um, yeah, I think that's a very busy step. Um, it would have been nice to have broken that out a little bit more. Um, you're going to have to think very carefully about what your sequence is here, um, especially depending on how you want to paint it. Um, yeah, quite a bit of photo etching in, in this as well. So that's that's a busy old step, that. Step four, we're adding primarily ship's boats at this stage and the, the accompanying cranes and then we've got some more ventilation structure going on the rear so a little bit less going on there and on step five we are adding uh, chains, capstans, uh, vents, spare gun barrels uh, got some ducting going on there um, the main mast and the foremast going into place. Uh, they look like they're all plastic. Um, more barrel canisters at the rear and some more capstans at the back. I gotta be honest, I wouldn't be doing that in that order. You, you're putting low level items on at the same time as putting high level items on. I, I would have done that probably before I did this step here. Um, so I question whether that's the, the right way to be working. Partly personal preference, I guess. Um, then we're doing anchors, uh, flagstaffs, um, deck guns and main guns. Uh, main guns look like they're independent, which is nice. Um, and we've got the ventilators at the back as separate items, again, which is nice. <laughs> and then I absolutely wouldn't do that. Step seven, we're adding all of that delicate detail onto the hull. There is no way on earth you're doing that. If you want to have it um, waterline, looks like we can, but you join those two bits of hull before you do any of that. Even if you're going to leave off all the shaft lines and the rudder, you 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 put that on beforehand. Because if you've got a load of sanding to do, you don't want to be doing that with all this delicate work on. That's nonsense. Anyway, um, looks like we've got shaft lines with moulded on A-frames, uh, which I suspect will mean that there'll be a bit more clean up. I might be wrong. Um, and then we've got a two-part rudder and four propellers, um, which is two different part numbers. So we have got handed propellers, which is good, as it should be. So that's it. Seven steps to build the whole of that. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, then we have the paint instructions, um, which leaves a little bit to be um, designed, doesn't it? Um, I haven't seen um, a paint shout out. I haven't missed it, have I? Sprue map, building steps. No. Okay, well, um, we've got colours on there, but they're not telling you what they are. So um, make that up as you like. Um, we have got the red funnel, which is always attractive. Um, at different stages in its life, it wouldn't have had the red funnel. It would have had a, a grey funnel or possibly even a black one. Um, we have got um, very basic rigging on that view, but it doesn't follow through on that view, so you can't see where the signal flags are and how many there is or anything like that, and they're not shown on the computer-generated imagery. Um, these green numbers reference um, the decals, so we've got some decal flags, decal nameplate, we've got the um, identification markings for the turret tops, um, and that looks like probably it for decals, so no depth markers. Um, so uh, anyone that follows my channel will know how I'm feeling about that. Underwhelmed. Um, yeah, okay. Um, we'll talk about the instructions at the end. Let's have a look at the decals. So the decals come in a separate little zip bag. Um, we've got a loose, slightly tacky, greasy piece of paper. Um, doesn't tell us who's done the decals. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, they've been done by Snowman. They're quite thick. What have we got? We have nameplates. We have what looks like to be the heraldic shield for the, f for the bow. Although I didn't see that as a, a decal instruction. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, beg your pardon. 10 is the golden eagle that goes on the stern. So they've given you some extras of that. Um, so you've got two nameplates, one golden eagle, and two heraldic shields. So you've got some spares. Um, got the two different um, turret markings. And then you've got flags in fluttering or straight options. So um, there's quite a bit of carrier film on those. So that those flags, uh, you'll have to put them on some foil and trim the foil. Um, it'd be easier to do on the square flags. Um, I think these will look quite lumpy on the hull. And yeah, they might be a little bit difficult to... Depending on the texture on the top of your turrets, they could be a little bit challenging to put on because they are quite thick. Uh, they're sort of like Tamiya decals. Um, but they won't be too translucent, so that's one positive. So next is our sheet of photo etch. So let me just show you that. So the first thing you'll observe is there is absolutely no railings whatsoever. So the whole ship has no railings, uh, none on the superstructure and none around the edge of the hull. So for me, um, that's an omission. It means the kit's not complete um, and I'm having to spend more money to source it on a kit that actually wasn't particularly cheap for the scale. So um, that's disappointing and I think is... is um, not the best idea at this scale. Um, it, you know, it would cost nothing to put uh, little railings in. Um, we've got the the flagstaffs are very, very delicate. It'll be very challenging not to damage those. Um, we've got the little uh, platforms. Uh, I, they look like cranes on the instructions, but they're like um, they're like little bridge runouts, like bridge wings. Um, again, very, very delicate. The photo etch is extremely delicate. The uh, 
funnel caps is very thin I and mean, some of these ladders are so tiny um, we've got anchor chain and then we've got horizontal and vertical ladders I'm not quite sure what those are I think they're the vents for the back of the turrets the percussion vents um, and I'm not quite sure what they are either very very tiny it's going to be a real challenge not to damage that lot um, yeah okay and it is wafer wafer thin it's the thinnest thinnest photo etch I've ever handled that is really thin be careful with that right so all the hull parts are in a very strange bag arrangement so they came all taped down Let's perhaps see the tape there so as I've cut the tape we've got this open bag it's a heat heat sealed bag which has broken away from this which was taped onto that like that and then this part has been pushed down there and folded over and taped in it's a very odd way of working um, so this is heat sealed and is basically open other than having been taped down whereas this is resealable so let's have a look at the hull and deck first Right, now I didn't see this in the instructions, um, so when they said it's full hull, what they meant was you can make a full hull version, um, but this is definitely a waterline plate, so you would put a metal weight in there, I don't believe we've got the metal weight, I haven't seen it, um, but you'd put a little, like Tamiya do, put a little uh, metal weight in there um, and build your hull sides around it and then you've got a waterline version um, mine's damaged see the end there is uh, the points been uh, folded because um, it does rattle around in the box a little bit from side to side so that's a bit disappointing um, oh and actually I've got a bit snapped off the back off the stone there as well which isn't in the bag so um, someone's treated that pretty poorly in the factory before um, it's been put in a bag so not happy about that right let's have a look at this lower hull um, okay so this appears to be slide molded We've got for a slide molding seam it's actually quite heavy but there's a it comes up there comes up there and then goes across to the um, bilge keel and then comes out the other side um, along the um, wing there for the uh, propeller shaft and then comes back down so there's a bit of clean up to do on both sides and we've got two very small nubs in the centre uh, and another seam there that's going to be really difficult to clean in between the double bilge keels um, we have a little bit of detail in the hull there and the, the actual wings for the um, um, propeller shafts are um, nicely moulded you're not having to stick them on and fill them and sand around them and stuff so I quite like that element um, yeah and then we've got a location slot for the rudder um, there is no other detail on this, there's no panel lines or anything like that, which you'd probably expect at this scale, but um, other people like Flyhawk will do it. So, yeah, that's all right, though, as, as it goes. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Right, then, let's start in the next bag with um, the deck, which is bowed like a banana. Um, it's it's really bad. They've got a great big piece of sprue in the middle, and that that is what's that? Two centimeters. Yeah, that's that is really bad. Um, so as I look at the detail, um, there is some lovely detail in terms of crisp molding of the skylights 
they're really nice and we've got all these little bollards there which are, are nice as well um, we've got some detail around the main turrets which is lovely the deck planking oversize um, they could have done that differently um, it's it's massively massively oversized um, they're about three foot wide planks those uh, if you scaled them up um, but it actually gives you the right impression um, if you like um, got a flat flat point to the um, bow there um, you'd have to drill out the hose pipe openings and then we've got this interesting little molding at the back um, the stern there which goes into the hull so that's interesting they obviously tried to achieve something they couldn't uh, by molding the two hull halves then we have this sprue which has got the hull halves on it um, and is that no I think it's just plastic pour um, we've got the little raised lumps for the heraldic shields. We've got nicely, crisply done uh, detail on the um, sides of the hull there. And the, all these little holes are the location points for um, the netting, as we talked about. I'm not quite sure what they are. Is that netting top or something? Not quite sure. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the connection points are underneath. They'll need a bit of cleaning up. Um, but yeah, that should look all right. I'm just going to see if I can work out what's going on here at the stern. Okay, go have some clean up there, the join won't be brilliant, but uh, yeah, that looks quite nice. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, in a Ziploc bag, we have these two items here. So we saw that this goes in in stage one, we put all that secondary armament goes in there. Um, and then we've got the mounting point for another main gun. It's a big um, ejector pin molding to get rid of there, but at least it's flat. Uh, we've got some detail in terms of um, open and closed um, scuttles there. Um, otherwise, these are completely flat, which they wouldn't have been. Um, again, if this was fly hook, there'd be some detail on that. I can guarantee it. Um, and we've got a sink mark running all the way around the edge of that um, barbette. The moulding of the uh, louvre uh, around these ventilations is very nice. However, there's no other detail there. But that look lovely under a wash. That'll come out nice. Then as we look at this part, we've got all the ship's boats chocks on those. And although they're a bit heavy, they don't look too bad. You have to remember the scale, of course. Um, again, we've got more scuttles. This time we've got a couple of doors. Um, they're a bit slab-like, but at least they give you an impression. And we've got some moulded on hand rungs or ladders. Um, and we've got wooden deck there. Yeah. Splinter shields are quite thin. Um, there's no supports, but that's probably helping keep them thin actually. I imagine there's something else coming out of those, but that's not too bad, is it? Okay, next we have, um, strange way of doing it. Um, we have all our booms for the anti-torpedo nets. It's nice that they've done these separately. Usually they're completely omitted or they are moulded on and they're therefore too heavy. 
these are going to be a real challenge to remove and clean up and I'm already thinking brass rods the way to go with all of them okay sprue E has um, slide molded two funnels um, and we have some nice detail on there with hand rungs and ladders um, and they are completely hollow and on the top there we have molded in uh, funnel caps which is nice if you don't want to mess around with those or inevitably you completely um, ruin them in the process of trying to take them out of the etch fret. Um, we've got another deck section here um, again we've got some really nice detail in terms of hatches and um, skylights um, and deck detail so very very nicely done um, some nicely molded um, details in terms of supports and structures uh, we've got some of the mast structures here and they're a bit heavy um, as are the splinter shields around these decks um, they could be a little thinner but they're not they don't look bad at all they don't look bad um, you know that, that's no worse than a Tamiya uh, kit at this scale although again fly hook would do that better okay so our next sprue is B and we have two of these um, and we've got all sorts of components on here so we've got two slide molded ends um, and the detail around the ventilation the actual ventilation itself is absolutely stunning um, but there's no other detail on there and that, that's a pity um, and again the detail there it's really really nice um, ships boats well we've got all the interior detail on and no ejector pin marks you usually get a couple right in there which which you can never clean up um, Undersides of the boat, I mean, the boats are totally smooth, so there's no um, there's no slats or anything. It's um, totally smooth, but it's okay. I think they look really thick, unless they've got tops. I think they might have tops. I think that goes on there by the looks of it. In which case, that's the deck, and, and it's probably all right. Little steam launch, so that's good can't see oh there it is that will go into there so that's quite a, a novel way of doing it actually so you've got your superstructure here which you can paint up separately and then paint your deck that's a lot easier so that's a really nice idea that that's um yeah that's an innovation i like um and we've got the search lights they've all got sync in them so they'll all need sorting. They're very small, so we'd, you'd have to sort them on the sprue before you take them off. A bit of Mr. Surfacer um, and give them a sand, they'll be all right. Um, again, the ventilation is nicely done, but you've got some really heavy seams just running through them. So uh, very difficult to clean up. Uh, then we've got the gun barrels, some of which are broken. Um, hopefully master will bring out some replacements then you won't have that to worry about anchors are a bit basic I think and look a little bit wrong somehow the the, the bottom piece looks to be oversized um, that's the capstan top so that's okay and I think they're torpedo tubes, which aren't too bad. I guess that's moulding that you need to remove. Um, the gun turrets have some detail and rivet detail on the top, um, but nothing on the sides. Bit of clean up, bit of sink, bit of flash. 
and then we've got the bridge wings there which are solid um, floats they're quite nicely done the floats as is the um, armoured fighting command structure it's okay it's not blowing my socks off um, but it's okay and I do really like that idea of the separate center sections for the boats that's that's really nice okay our last sprue sprue X um, it is dealing with the underside of the hull so we've got the propellers which are okay that a little thick but okay uh, propeller shafts have got a lot of flash on as I suspected they've, they've molded the a-frame onto the shaft line um, which is more difficult to do than having it separate and we've ended up with a load of flash as well as the seams to clean up so it's quite a bit of work to get them right um, they look like extensions for the shaft line wings and then we've got the two-part rudder so I think it's a twin rudder that little bit there sits behind it um, the rudder's got no detail on it so no anodes or anything so there we have it TACOM's venture into 1700 ship models what are my first impressions well I, I think the way to um, express my first impressions of this is to list out the highlights and the lowlights of the kit uh, as I see them so the highlights of the kit is the subject matter um, typically if you wanted to build this in this scale you're going resin which means you're buying something quite expensive quite labor intensive so you're able to buy into a really interesting subject matter that I know a lot of people will be interested into at a greatly reduced price uh, and with a more ease of build to be honest um, so the subject matter is a highlight there is some nice touches in here so um, the molding of the skylights and some of the deck detail is a highlight the um, solution for building up the ship's boats is a highlight it's a really nice touch that very nicely thought out and for me that is the ultimate highlight of the kit that is the the best thing it's a new innovation never seen anyone do it that way before works really well uh, makes it easy to paint absolutely love it um, think that's it for highlights um, low lights decals um, a little bit on the thick side um, and that's nitpicking um, I'll accept uh, no depth markers for the hull uh, Personally, I think it's wrong that they don't put depth markers on. All ships have them. It's a standard thing. It's nothing to do them. Even if they'd just done a white line, it would have been nothing to do them as decals. Um, so for me, um, it's missing that. So uh, decals are a low light. Instructions, absolute low light. No, no paint instructions other than a picture. I mean... That picture is better than what you get in the instructions for painting it um, because you can see this bit better, it's, it's clearer. Um, there is no paint shout outs whatsoever. Um, so, you know, is that the same red as that? Is that hull of the ship's boat the same red as that? Is that black matte or satin on the, on the boot line? You know, um, is the hull grey the same as the superstructure grey um, what colour is that funnel because it's not the same colour as the superstructure so what colour is that is that black or is that dark grey you don't know you have to guess or you have to do an awful lot of research so thanks for that one TACOM um, rubbish utter rubbish no paint shout outs um, so that's another low light. The instructions, I think, they've, they've put too much into the steps. They should have just 
stretched out a little bit and put some more steps in just to make it a little bit more logical. Next low light is the etch. We've got no railings. They show railings. There's railings on the picture, which for me is a little bit fraudulent that they're showing um, this imagery with railings and then they don't supply them. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it would have cost next to nothing in the grand scheme of the kit to add a fret of railings, even if they were standard lengths like Trumpeter sometimes do and they weren't cut to size and you had to cut them to size. At least you could work with that. So for me, etch is another low light. Um, in terms of plastic parts, I've got damaged parts. Um, I've, um, I've got parts with flash on, I've got parts with sync on, um, and all in all, um, there's a lot of detail they could have put in that they haven't. If you can put the level of detail into some of their deck fittings, you can also put it into the sides where there would be um, hoses and pipe work and trunking uh, and all sorts of bits and pieces al along the edges of uh, all of this bulwarks and they put none of it on. They've also omitted many of the doors, I suspect. Um, so for me, it's a bit lacklustre. Um, if you're going to come charging into a new market, you want to try and blow people's socks off. And um, fortunately, Tacom, this absolutely doesn't. Flyhawk blows this out of the water. Um, it's, it's no worse than a Tamiya kit, but a lot of those Tamiya kits are donkey's years old. Um, so for me, it's a bit of... A, it's, it's disappointing, is what it is. Um, yeah. Disappointing. A lot of low lights, not too many highlights. Um, I, I guess, to be fair, another highlight is all of the um, booms for the torpedo nets and the fact that they're separate. However, they're so finely moulded, um, I doubt how easy it will be to clean them up without breaking them. But at least they've included them. Um, and they have given lip surface to a rigging plan, uh, unlike some others. But... There's a lot of work needed to get that where it needs to be, um, I think. So you're definitely going to have to spend some time researching it and you're definitely going to have to spend uh, money to be able to actually build a, a ship of the kit. If you just build it as it comes in the box, um, it will look like a good representation, but it will lack some detail. And for me, a ship doesn't look right without its railings, uh, you know, uh, at 1700 scale, we can absolutely put railings on. Um, yeah. So having now understood that this actually is a re-release of a, uh, an eight-year-old Flyhawk kit, I wanted to just um, add an additional note to my first impressions. Um, I'm not going to change anything that I've said in my first impressions, but... Um, there is aftermarket available for the Flyhawk Durflinger. And because this is the Flyhawk kit, essentially, all of those will fit. And you can get um, a gold medal um, upgrade set from Flyhawk that um, puts deck on it, puts resin parts in, puts metal press parts in, and lots and lots more photo etch that replaces the mass with brass. Uh, and will bring the ship right up to the level that you want. Um, there is a, a lesser uh, upgrade kit from Flyhawk as well, which will significantly improve the kit um, as well. Um, you can buy separately uh, masking sheet deck and master do some metal barrels for it, uh, and also uh, Ped House in Germany um, do some improved decals for it. So there is aftermarket available to get this kit where I think it should have been right from the off. Um, but my recommendation would be look out for the limited edition Flyhawk kit or um, or better still the, f the first edition commemorative Flyhawk kit which will give you all the photo etch you need, um, various little upgrades including a wooden deck. So for me Dodge the Tacom kit, go for the Flyhawk kit. You get the same kit, but you get better etch 
um, and you get some other goodies in there and you're probably going to get better instructions um, and um, better uh, paint shout outs as well. So my final thought on this kit is if you see it, miss it, go and buy the Flyhawk one. They're about the same price. So much so that I won't build this. Um, I will. I will move this on in some way. So I don't know if someone's interested in um, taking this off me. Dr um, drop me a line, uh, and if you're interested in it, I'm sure we can come to an, uh, a suitable arrangement to get it over to you. Um, all right. I hope that was informative. I have tried to be. Um, uh, fair and open-minded the, the, uh, but yeah it's just not where it needs to be hope that was helpful thank you for looking in enjoy your modeling and i will see you very soon <laughs>